third year medical student at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. And I'm a second year resident in emergency medicine. I'm currently an assistant professor of clinical pediatrics at Columbia, and uh, I'm an attending physician at the Children's Hospital of New York. I'm a first year medical student. I'm the residency program director and the director of clinical operations in the Department of Ophthalmology. I'm a fourth year medical student here at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. I came to Einstein June 1st, 1968. It was shortly after um, the assassination of Martin Luther King, and I was only here about two or three weeks when Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated, and uh, the country went wild. Einstein became concerned, and, and, and the topic really was, what can we do to change this? What can we do to improve the lot of the American people? And Einstein came up with a, a very unique program. It was called the Martin Luther King Robert F. Kennedy Program for Special Studies at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. A group of six of us uh, got together on the behest of the dean, Dr. Harry Gordon at the time, and decided to start a program to encourage Afro-American and Latino students to apply to medical schools. But the problem was that there was a small group of applicants at that time that maybe we should train people who didn't get into medical school and, and get them on that list of applicants. We took seven students and brought them here into this special program. We trained them so that they could apply to any medical school in the United States, not just Einstein. And our job was to give them the material that was necessary to make them qualified to apply and to be accepted to medical schools on their own. The greatest challenge to Einstein in increasing the number of underrepresented students has been keeping to the commitment through several generations of faculty members, making sure that every faculty member who came into the school had a real commitment to doing this. Our mission and overall goal is to reach out to individuals who have been historically underrepresented in medicine, and primarily that means our black and Latino and Native American individuals. We have several pipeline programs, activities that goes out recruiting or making aware of individuals of careers in health and medicine in particular, and then provide support and activities to allow them to be successful. Once the student gets admitted to Einstein, we work with several offices on campus to ensure their success. Um, so primarily is to outreach recruitment and retention of underrepresented um, individuals in medicine. The Office of Minority Student Affairs actually put the face on the commitment that the school had to attracting and training students from diverse backgrounds. It was the place where these students could go in times of trouble and feel comfortable and see the commitment in action. The Office of Minority Affairs, that's what it was called, and now the Office of Diversity Enhancement invited the underrepresented students to a summer program just before the start of medical school where we had an opportunity to go over the curriculum that was going to come up and we also got a chance to bond with each other and I think that camaraderie helped us create a friendship that will provide us with the support network. The Office of Diversity Enhancement does a good job in helping to foster that family community and knowing that in case you get into any trouble or you have any stumbles along the way or if you ever have any questions, they have an open door. I mean, every time you stop on the second floor, the door is always open. They're in contact with you constantly via email or via phone. Anything you need, they're there for you and they're doing a good job. Our branch of College of Medicine is in the Bronx. And the Bronx is made of a population that has a strong representation from uh, Latino and uh, black people. And I think that the school has to be responsive to its environment, not only to its educational mission, but to where it lives. <laughs> and I think that part of that responsibility is to be able to provide opportunities for people who can serve that community and to enhance their experience. The Bronx is extremely diverse in terms of different cultures and languages, socioeconomic status, healthcare disparities. So I believe that by working in this community as a medical student, as a resident, you truly can work anywhere else. In itself, we had a diverse student body, even though the, the underrepresented minority well, accounted for maybe 10% or less. 
Um, it was still, you got to meet people from everywhere and from different experiences, and so that was welcoming. The various cultures and various backgrounds enhances everybody's uh, knowledge of how to take better take care of patients. It helps people realize what different cultures are and, and what they mean, what different things mean for different cultures. So therefore, it is a way that medical care will eventually be enhanced. There is a certain appreciation that after taking care of a patient, they look at you and, and you know, you almost touch because they're happy that you look like them and you're taking care of them. And I really believe that I add something to their care in addition to just being a doctor, but also being an African-American origin that helps for them to feel comfortable, to ask me questions, ask culturally relevant questions. In the Bronx, for example, there's a increased Hispanic population and clearly minorities should be represented in the attending and student body because as the patients become more diverse, I think it is an imperative to have a population of medical faculty who reflect the patients that we see. Our graduates are coming back to us as attendings, as, uh, as mentors and role models. Last year, one of our graduates was a White House fellow and there were only 21 fellows in the nation that were selected for that special opportunity, and he happens to be one of our graduates. One wants to keep a diverse faculty because a diverse faculty uh, promotes a, a diverse student body. The, and and uh, in terms of the community and providing care, uh, patients like to have physicians who understand their culture and who are, you know, cognizant of some of their practices. Its growth really now kind of has expanded into a lot of different programs. Um, pipeline programs come out of the office for, for minority students to engage them for the recruitment process. More importantly, when they're here, assessing each of the students to figure out who's having problems and who's not. Who just needs like, hi, how are you, how are things going, and who really needs a little bit more strategy building um, for their studying if that, need, if that need arises. We have a high school program that is quite successful. We have had students from the high school program who became medical students and medical students all over the country. And I think from that point of view, it's an ongoing success. The Young Science Enrichment Program, which is a program that brings in high school kids from the Bronx and kind of helps guide them through the high school process to get into college and eventually to get into medical school. We're always looking into how can we partner with other organizations, educational groups, to get the word out that this is a career or this is a profession that's attainable. The main challenge is to increase the pipeline and the programs that we have in place to do that, like the high school program, uh, like the Hispanic Center of Excellence, is what's important to nurture and develop uh, and to expand. Increasing the pipeline is the root, not just for Einstein, but for other medical schools, all medical schools, to recruit and retain more black and Latino students. You're not the only one, which is great. You know, there's other people who look like you. You get along great with the people who don't look like you. You know, everybody's just in a, feel, in a, in a collective atmosphere to just become great physicians. And that's the goal, you know, no matter where you came from, what you're doing, what your background is, we're all going to strive to become great physicians and I think Einstein really does make great physicians. I have a strong personal commitment to both a diverse student body as well as a diverse faculty. And I realize that this is a challenge, this is not something that's easy. At the student level, it means lowering the level of indebtedness and making it more feasible for students from disadvantaged backgrounds to be able to attend Einstein. At the faculty level, it means really nurturing faculty and really building the pipeline necessary from which to be able to recruit. Uh, we want to be clear that in every search that we do, both at the level of our department chair, certainly, as well as at the level of positions uh, within departments, that we're really seeking in the broadest possible ways uh, a diverse uh, pool from which we can recruit. Uh, I'm proud that one of our most important departments, our pediatrics department, we were able to appoint uh, a member of a minority group to be the chair of that department, but we have to build on that. And I think success breeds success. 
The more that you can really diversify your faculty, the more likely it is that people will perceive that Einstein is a place that welcomes people from diverse backgrounds. And that's something that I really want to foster during my deanship.